What, another dinosaur track video? Yes, because this is a spot I've wanted to come for a long time. It's a track that I've heard about for years. I never actually came here, so this is my first time checking it out. A 112 million year old Cedar Mountain formation. So a lot like some of the sauropod tracks that I found at the Utah Raptor site. Might be the same faces, maybe not. We're gonna check it out and see anyway. So this is just not very far from the bone site that I just showed you guys in another video. In that location, there's a bunch of Jurassic Mars information, dinosaur bones all jumbled up in a really coarse grained, high energy fluvial channel system. A lot like fluvial channel systems present at the Utah Raptor site. This is a very different environment we're about to look at, though it's low energy, enough to preserve tracks. Um, must have been not a very high energy system, not very coarse grained. It's gonna be very fine grained. This is gonna be really cool. I'm really looking forward to this. This is kind of interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's kept behind a gate. They must have a problem with wayward cows or sheep trying to get in here or something. I know there was an issue with uh, BLM bulldozer last year in 2022, something happened. Um, they rolled onto a part of the track site they weren't supposed to be on. I understand it hasn't been too terribly damaged, so we'll find out. First, we're gonna take a look at apparently some crocodile tracks up here. Let's see what that's all about. Okay, so not all tracks and trackways are 100% intuitively obvious. Um, apparently, that groove over there is being interpreted as a slide from a crocodilian. So it's a belly slide where you went sliding into a pond. Um, it's got that greenish color the sediment uh, does. So it's got that kind of chlorite rich color. It suggests standing water. We saw this at the Utah Raptor site. Um, we talked a little bit about water holes there. So it's possible um, there's a couple of these grooves. It could be crocodile belly tracks. Um, I guess it could also be a dinosaur tail track if the dinosaur is kind of dragging its tail for a little bit or something. Um, who knows? It's an interpretation anyway. These are pretty cool. These are actually little two-toed tracks, probably made by some sort of dromaeosaurid. Um, little Utah raptors, maybe something related to them, possibly. But they've got the two toes because the third one, as everybody remembers from watching Jurassic Park, and while it's never ending sequels, it's got that big claw that they probably held upright. And sure enough, these are little two-toed tracks that look a lot like that. There's some slide marks over there too, uh, some skid marks, maybe from a crocodilian or maybe from an animal taking a bad step in a, in a wet pond and kind of sliding along. So it's interesting, you know, it's fitting in with the story that we came up with for the taphonomy of the Utah Raptor track site, where these guys were kind of hanging out by waterways, scavenging or hoping to ambush prey. These are little guys. The feet are maybe only about eight inches long, 10 inches long. So again, about the size of um, a Deinonychus or the thing that ate Newman in Jurassic Park, a little Dilophosaurus. So not a gigantic full on Utah Raptor, but maybe a juvenile or maybe a small related species, just like we have foxes, wolves, coyotes and everything in between. The same is probably true in the early Cretaceous. All right, these are pretty cool. Let's take a look at some of the other ones. There's even some modern tracks from some joker that was walking along down in there in the mud. Okay, so this is pretty cool. There's a medium-sized theropod track going off that way. There's what looks like sauropod tracks going off sort of uh, at an angle to the theropod track. And there's maybe some little Deinonychus type tracks in there or something. Um, but there's definitely a variety. And I'll just point out that this has that crinkly texture again that's typical of microbial mats. We saw this at the track site on the Green River in the Navajo and the Cayenta. We're seeing it all over. There's really nice track sites like this. It shows up in the Jurassic and the Cretaceous all over. So microbial mats, standing water, that kind of greenish chloride color consistent with ponds and lakes. Um, and just like you'd expect, drawing a wide variety of animals to get to the water. It was predators, herbivores, scavengers, omnivores, you name it, they were all coming to this water because it was probably a pretty hostile, arid environment at the time of deposition. All right, the lighting is just absolutely perfect to be able to see these theropod tracks down there. 
they're going off in that direction. They're heading pretty much to the south. Um, again, it's an animal about shoulder height. It's so about four or five feet tall at the hips, maybe five, six feet tall at the head. Not a gigantic theropod, but it would have caused you some grief in life. Um, there's a variety of allosauroid type things running around in the early Cretaceous. It might have been something like an acrocanthosaurus or something like that. You can't really tell from the tracks alone. We just don't know anything about the growth rate of these animals in life. We don't know anything about their actual foot morphology. So it's probably an allosauroid of some type, but Good luck figuring out what else. It's pretty cool too. There's a huge theropod track out there. That's probably like an adult Acrocanthosaurus um, or close to an adult. It's all commingled with a bunch of maybe sauropod tracks, um, maybe some nodosaur and ankylosaur tracks. We saw ones just like that, a little bit bigger and in cross-sectional view, not flat like this, but we saw them at the Utah Raptor site. So same kind of fauna where you have these big herbivorous animals making the big round tracks. We didn't see theropod tracks at the Utah Raptor site, but the preservation there was cross-sectional. You probably wouldn't see a plan view like this. Um, but this is really cool. It's definitely a mosaic of communities coming to this waterhole, probably a lakeshore in the early Cretaceous. Man, they, I'm really glad we came to check this out. This is awesome. I got to spend more time here. I got to spend a lot more time here. There's a lot to see. You could easily miss it if you're not paying close attention. All right, so that was the site. It's not enormous. It only goes from one side of this little opening to the other. Less than 100 feet wide. The crocodile tracks are, or the crocodile slide traces are off on the hillside a little bit. Totally awesome site though. 100% trampled in some areas, not so much in others. Maybe that's got something to do with water depth. Maybe it's just the way things are preserved. Super cool track site. If you're ever in the area, man, definitely come and check it out because there's a lot to see here. You get a glimpse into an early Cretaceous animal community on a lakeshore that's long gone. You can see the same thing now in any modern lakeshore, though. If you go and see cow tracks, human tracks, dog tracks, coyotes, same idea. The animals change, but the story is the same. I'm really glad you guys came along on this trip with me. This was a thrill. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to go check out some Cretaceous stuff now. Later Cretaceous stuff up in the book cliffs. This is it. This is the last stop of my Moab adventure this time. I hope you had a good time looking at some of the rocks, some of the fossils, trays fossils, body fossils. We asked some questions. We found some really cool things. The adventure is going to continue. I'm going to go take a look at some late Cretaceous stuff now. Come on along. See what you think about that. There's oh so much stuff out there. So many rocks, so little time. I'm doing what I can to get to them. And thank you so much for coming along for the ride. I'll see you again.